and welcome to the first annual Taking Care of Tiny Teeth Summit. I'm so happy you're here with us today. I'm your host, Alyssa Asante, baby teeth advocate and author of the Tiny Teeth book series. I'm on a mission to eliminate the fear of the dentist for kids and empower toddler parents to overcome the challenges of taking care of baby teeth so that their little ones can establish a positive relationship with their smile, avoid the vicious cycle of dental fear and anxiety, and join the Cavity Free Club for good. And that's exactly what we're here to do today. I'm thrilled to be here with Danny Granick, CEO and co-founder of Bristle Health. Welcome, Danny. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here with us today. And before we dive into the role that bacteria plays in causing and preventing cavities, could you tell our audience a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm Danny Granick. I'm the co-founder and the CEO at Bristol Health. My background was originally in biochemistry, and then I moved into the genomics industry for around five years before starting the company. Um, what we do at Bristol, so we developed a test that takes a saliva sample, and we look at something called the oral microbiome. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the microbiome, it is a term for the bacteria, fungi, and viruses that live in and on our bodies. Um, the oral microbiome is specifically those microbes that live inside of our mouths. They contribute to oral health and disease. So our test measures and identifies all of those bacteria to give you insights into your oral health uh, in a very convenient kind of non-invasive way. Wow, so cool. I'm I'm so excited to dive into this today. Um, Danny, unfortunately, as you know, even though cavities are for the most part 100% preventable, they're still the number one childhood disease. And I know for a lot of parents, this is really disappointing and, and frustrating because they're doing all the things that they've been told to do for their little ones. They're brushing, they're flossing, they're, they're cutting out the sugar, um, but their kids are still getting these surprise cavities. In your opinion, who is the real culprit here and what, what is the root cause of, of cavities in kids? Yeah, so a lot of people aren't aware that um, oral health and disease, like I mentioned, is really rooted in the oral microbiome. Um, and when we talk about oral disease, we're specifically referring to these harmful microbes. So we call them pathogenic bacteria. And in the case of cavities, there are specific bacteria that grow inside of our mouths. And some people have more of those bacteria than others. Um, those bacteria produce acid, which erodes the enamel on our teeth and eventually creates a cavity that's detected in the dental office. So when we talk about children's cavities, we're really talking about these pathogenic bacteria that ideally we want to get rid of. Uh, a really good example of well-known species is Streptococcus mutans, S mutans. Yeah, it, that bacteria. And so, you know, I, we all know the bacteria, it causes cavities, but um, your testing, it doesn't only detect cavities, correct? The Bristle Health saliva test, it, it's looking for a lot more. So could you give a quick overview of the impact that bacteria has, not just on our mouth, but also on, on our overall health? Definitely. Um, so like I mentioned, there are specific bacteria that can be in our mouths that contribute to cavities and, and those bacteria produce acid, but there are other kinds of bacteria. There's actually been over 700 different species of bacteria that have been associated with the oral microbiome. We don't all have all 700. Most people have, you know, between, I believe, 80 and 120 species, but you can imagine that some of those bacteria may contribute to cavities. There are other bacteria that grow at our gum line and can contribute to and progress periodontal disease. And they're not all bad. Um, so on the other side, we have beneficial bacteria that can contribute to oral health. They can fight off the disease-causing bacteria. They can actually contribute to systemic health outcomes as well. Uh, so it really is talking about a balance in the oral microbiome between these good and bad bacteria. Oh, it's so interesting because I feel like for me in school and for the longest time, right, we've all been told bacteria is bad. It's the enemy carpet bomb it. <laughs> and so we, we, we sterilize and we sanitize our, our mouths with harsh toothpastes and mouth rinses. But 
what you're saying is not all bacteria is bad. So what what does the current science say as far as bacteria being a friend or a foe? Is it even that binary? Um, and what what should the overall goal be when it comes to the bacteria in our mouth and our, our oral microbiome? Yeah, that's such a good question. I mean, I think for the longest time, to your point, we have seen everybody associates bacteria and, and even more broadly microbes with things like infection, um, but our ability to analyze these microbes and understand them more has shown us that there are tons of beneficial bacteria that we want to keep, right? And we actually want to promote within our bodies. And you're, you hit the nail on the head. Um, so many of the products today talk about, you know, you, you can go to the grocery store and you see something, I won't say the brand name, but maybe you see a mouth rinse and on the mouth rinse, it says, you know, kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. And that sounds like it would be a really good thing, but you're actually not only killing the harmful bacteria, you're killing the good bacteria as well. And when we wipe the slate clean, we actually make ourselves potentially more prone to those bad bacteria coming back and in a worse way than they were before. Um, so, you know, I think the dental industry and, and a lot of other industries as well are kind of shifting their perspective from kill everything to, okay, how do we approach this so that we selectively target the pathogenic bacteria and we try to promote the beneficial bacteria? there has been kind of this shift right we we talk a lot about probiotics and prebiotics for our gut and the bacteria there um so i think it only makes sense that you know upstream in our mouth we're we're trying to nourish um you know focus on what we want to grow right feed the good um and then the rest what you're saying is that it kind of um almost self-manages itself. If you're focusing on nourishing the good, they actually help to maintain that balance. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, it's a bit like, um, let's see, what's a good example? It's kind of like a coral reef. Uh, so you can imagine that your your mouth and your teeth are, are this coral reef and you want the coral reef covered in I'm not a marine biologist, but let's call it like beneficial algae, right? And as long as the reef is covered in these beneficial algae, it makes it really hard for fish to eat away at the coral reef or whatever eats coral to do damage. Um, but if that algae isn't covering certain parts, then it leaves the coral reef exposed to harmful things coming in and causing damage. And our mouths act in very much the same way. You want your mouth more or less covered in these beneficial microbes to prevent harmful bacteria from coming in and sticking to your mouth and causing damage. And when we talk about harmful bacteria sticking in your mouth, we talk about things like tartar, plaque, you know, the same things that, that your dentist tells you you need to scrape off. Um, that is one way for these harmful bacteria to kind of create a concrete or a glue and stick to your tooth and continue to cause damage. But if you have beneficial bacteria there, kind of pushes away or prevents those harmful bacteria from sticking. That's a good analogy. So when it comes to kids versus adults, as far as um, bacteria goes, is there a difference? Is there, what do we need to be aware of in order to specifically help our children to have a, a balanced microbiome? So like most of biology, there are some similarities and some differences, it's never gonna, going to be black black or white. Um, there are definitely distinct differences between the oral microbiomes of adults and kids. There are going to be species that emerge later in life that simply aren't present in a child's oral microbiome. The impact of those species is going to change over time. So, you know, we can have uh, a five-year-old and a 55-year-old and both of them can have the same abundance of periodontal bacteria. So bacteria that cause gum disease. Obviously the cases of a five-year-old having gum disease are incredibly rare, whereas the 55-year-old the um, may experience the symptoms of gum disease later in life. 
right? And that is kind of the impact of the same abundance of bacteria manifesting in different ways. Uh, on the flip side, there are many similarities between the oral microbiomes of parents and their kids. So a lot of research has shown that in particular mothers, and I hate to put the onus on, on you guys, but um, you know the, the oral microbiome of a mom, certain aspects of it can be passed to their infants. Um, so it's really important during and after pregnancy that mothers uh, test their oral microbiome, make sure that, you know, they're maintaining good oral health. I know that uh, pregnancy-induced gingivitis is a really common kind of symptom that, that a lot of women go through. If you have a history of cavities, a lot of research has shown that those species get passed to your children. It makes them have higher risk of, of those conditions themselves. So while the microbiomes can be different, there's certainly a lot of influences in uh, within families in particular. And a lot of those species are shared. So there is something that a theory um, that there is kind of a core oral microbiome, a, a set of bacteria that really seed the oral microbiome at the very earliest stages that are kind of there for life. And, you know, one idea is when we have children, we want to make sure that we're seeding that core oral microbiome with beneficial bacteria. It kind of sets them on a good path for success. I, that's a good point you make when whenever people ask me well when should i start you know taking care of when should i start taking care of my kids teeth whether it's brushing this or that and that and i say actually pregnancy <laughs> is the best time to yeah. start because that is that is when the bacteria and i i think a lot of people don't realize that's when that's when the teeth are starting to form and um as you say the mother's oral health has a huge impact prenatally on on their kids' oral health. So, Danny, could you share a bit more about your approach, Bristol Health's approach to preventing cavities in kids? What steps do you guys take for that? So there's there's a lot of different ideas. I mean, I think, you know, we can back up and, and maybe start with today's approach. Um, and if I'm mistaken anywhere, please let me know. But you know, for most people, when they think about dental care and when they think about the path to finding out that they have a cavity, you go to the dentist every six months, you have an observational screening and you have an x-ray and both of these methods look for the existing symptoms of disease. So in the case of cavities, you know, an x-ray is looking for active decay in your teeth and that's how a cavity is being diagnosed. Um, with our technology, because we're able to look at those causal bacteria and we can detect them at the very smallest abundances at the very earliest stages, we are able to detect them in a lot of cases before they've done irreversible damage. So at a point where they can be prevented and mitigated. Um, so that's, that's our first and foremost approach is, you know, through a simple saliva sample, can we detect the very earliest stages of disease, can we inform somebody of their risk before so much damage has been caused that they need an invasive, expensive, or painful procedure to kind of correct that damage? And from there, we want to focus on changes that they can make to reduce the abundance of those harmful bacteria. And there's a ton of different ways that you can do it. Um, it's a lot more than just brushing and flossing. So, you know, with our tests, we're able to inform somebody as to what the right oral care products are, what the right hygiene routine should be, any dietary changes that they should make so that we can kind of take this multi-pronged approach to rebalancing the oral microbiome and, and preventing the onset of disease. I love this. I think this is so cool. So this testing, obviously it can be done um, in a dental office, but you guys also offer at home so the, the patient the parents can actually proactively seek this out for their kids they don't have to hope that their dental provider offers this correct yeah um so we offer the test at home and through dental offices we're partnered with you know 60 to 70 dental offices it's a really new technology and you know we're bringing on new offices every day uh, but it's a lot of education so we wanted to make the test available to everybody you know 
that combined with the fact that a lot of people in, in the United States don't have access or easy access to a dental home, um, we wanted to make sure that they could do that on their own. And a lot of the recommendations that we provide are at home recommendations rather than in office. So people are able to get the test through either. So cool and so important. I love the idea of proactive prevention instead of reactively repairing. I think this is this is like the core of creating positive dental experiences for kids specifically. Um, amazing, what an amazing technology. So you had mentioned there with a with the bio, microbiome there's bacteria there's viruses there's fungi um so what what all are you guys testing for are you just testing for bacteria what what measurements are are we going to get back when we take this kind of testing yeah so our test is relatively unique in that we test for pretty much everything um we analyze the bacteria, the fungi, and the viruses in the oral microbiome, and it allows us to provide uh, a variety of insights from a single saliva sample rather than just a cavities test or just a gum disease test. Uh, so for adults taking the tests, you'll get insights into your oral health. That includes the beneficial score, so all of the microbes that contribute to good oral health, um, gum disease, cavities, uh, we provide oral systemic insights, so the bacteria that contribute to digestive conditions like IBS, IBD, Crohn's disease, bacteria that are tied to cardiovascular health and a host of other things. Uh, and then for the children's test, we really focus on the beneficial microbes, so the ones that contribute to good oral health, and then the karyogenic or the ones that uh, contribute to cavities. So you'll see the breakdown of all of the microbes that contribute to both of those, you'll get a high level score. It's zero to 10, really easy to interpret that can inform you of the balance between them. And then, as I mentioned, all of the recommendations alongside it. And I forgot to mention this, but we also provide uh, optional virtual one on one coaching with a hygienist. So they'll review your results, maybe make some tweaks to your care plan, answer any questions that you have if you've been experiencing symptoms, if you have uh, a medical history that may tie into your oral health, um, they're a fantastic resource. That, that's so cool. I feel like it's very and a very in-depth. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, or maybe we just forget, right? Our mouth is connected to the rest of our body. The bacteria that we're swallowing all day long makes it to the rest of our body. And then if we have bleeding gums, it, it gets to the rest of the body even more quickly through our bloodstream. So um, really cool that you're testing for cavities and, and beyond. Um, so you mentioned you guys give personalized recommendations. You, you do the testing and then you go above and beyond. It's like, okay, so here's your results and here's what you can do next. And so what are some of the, the go-to products that you guys recommend for for balancing the friendly and unfriendly bacteria and preventing cavities in kids? It really depends on what we find. Um, you know, we are, are on the toothpaste side, I think nanohydroxyapatite is like a really exciting um, compound that started to come to market. It's We've seen really good results from the people that have adopted it. So, you know, very interested to see how that goes from uh, nutritional supplement side. Um, Arginine has been really helpful in boosting beneficial microbes and kind of offsetting or killing off the pathogenic species. Um, let's see, there are so many things. Obviously with diet, you know, I think a lot of the same things that we've heard hold true, avoiding sugar. It's obvious. It's something that I think everybody has heard, but it truly is like one of the most effective things that you can probably do. Um, let's see. And then I think one of the, the most exciting things um, is the emergence of probiotics. Uh, so we, we have started to see, and I guess, you know, to back up, probiotics are um, formulations. They can come in a pill form or a tablet, um, but they are essentially beneficial bacteria that are kind of packaged up and you can deliver them to 
different parts of your body. If you swallow the pill, you know, maybe it helps see your gut microbiome. Um, if you have a tablet, maybe it helps seed your oral microbiome. But the idea is we can introduce beneficial species to kind of speed up the process of, of rebalancing the oral microbiome. And that's been a really exciting advancement, I think, in, in dental care and in kind of like the microbiome industry in general. Yeah, this is so cool. So there's, we all, most of us have heard about probiotics in general, but I think a lot of people maybe don't realize that they're, you, they can get oral microbiome specific probiotics. Is that the case? That's what you're saying. Do you guys offer that as well? Or we do, do how um, recommended. So as part of the recommendations, we will provide kind of, uh, the strains of bacteria that, that are going to be most beneficial based on the results. We have a probiotic that we released, I think in May of last year. Um, and, you know, for a subset of our users, we've identified that that one is going to be kind of the most effective, but if it's not, we'll tell you what other brands and products are out there that, that are going to work best. Before we wrap up, I'm asking all of the experts this question. I'd love to get your take on it as well. What is one step that parents can take to start creating positive dental experiences for their child today? From the people that I've talked to, and, and I'm not an expert here, um, but I think, you know, a lot of a lot of parents approach oral health as a do as I say, not as I do mentality. And, and I think that that makes it really hard to convince your child or, or get them bought into to practicing good oral health. Um, so I feel like for the parents out there, by taking more care and prioritizing your oral health, you're setting a better example for your kid to do the same or for your child to do the same. Um, and I think one part of that, right, is something like oral microbiome testing. But I mean, the really important piece isn't the test itself. It's what you do with the information. So really implementing those changes and, and making sure that you are taking good care of your oral health, because it is a really important aspect. Like you said, our mouths are connected to, to the rest of our bodies. Um, but you're also setting an, an example and, and educating your child about how important it is. Yes, modeling is so important. I couldn't agree more. Um, so Danny, what resources do you have for parents who are ready to start creating these positive dental experiences for their kids? Yeah, so we are going to offer uh, kind of a oral microbiome 101 for parents where they can educate themselves about what the oral microbiome is, the role that it plays in children's oral health and disease, um, which you'll be able to access through the link that I think is getting shown below. Um, so that resource will be available. And then we have tons of information on our website. So if you visit bristlehealth.com and go to our blog, um, there are tons of educational resources about the role of oral health and the oral microbiome across a bunch of different areas. So I would highly recommend going there. Amazing. Danny, thank you so much for being here today and for sharing all this incredible information with, with our parents. Um, everyone watching, be sure to head to the resources linked below that Danny mentioned so that you can start putting these strategies into place today.